Hey guys, I'm Eddie, and here I have a bag of normal saline. Normal saline? Nah, not really, but 0.9% sodium chloride, and this is a 1 liter bag. There's also 250 and 500 cc bags. Your institution may vary. Why am I making this video? Well, I think that even throughout medical school and residency, people still aren't trained about what is in this fluid, so I'm taking it upon myself to provide some education. More than anything, it's because I've seen the I've seen it uh, be inappropriately used and I think that I could help uh, the medical community just by taking a bag in my hand and going through it with you guys. I'm not saying not to use it, there are some indications, there are places and times to use it uh, both for resuscitation and for maintenance fluid but um, ultimately think about it. I too was once ignorant about this okay I'm not gonna pretend that I'm high and mighty and I didn't I didn't uh, like I always knew about what was in it. The truth is that I've done a lot of homework on it and uh, I've bettered myself so hopefully you guys are watching this video to do the same for yourself okay so let's get started each bag as we go through the label has 100 cc's and per excuse me per each 100 cc's it contains 900 milligrams of sodium chloride so this is a liter I can do math on the spot public math that means that this bag has 9 grams of sodium chloride now if you have your patient on a 2 gram cardiac restriction uh, diet of sodium or sodium chloride uh, it doesn't really work out very well because um, this is a lot of salt so you'll see fancy images um, on the internet that say that this is the equivalent of 35 or even 50 or 60 bags of laced potato chips and that's that's completely accurate um, you should always think about how much salt you're giving these patients uh, especially if you're putting patients on maintenance fluids which I'm not a huge fan of but nonetheless looking back on the bag you'll see that there's a pH of 5.0 and if you look at my if you watch my resuscitation talk um, you know that's not normal and you also see on top of that that there's a pH between there's a range here between 4.5 and 7 you might ask yourself why is there a pH range in a bag isn't this just uh, salt and and honestly speaking I've read some uh, some data that actual sodium chloride is is pH neutral in other words it has a pH of 7 but the thing is that uh, there's somebody who is smarter than me named John Emil Kenny who writes blog posts on poem p u l m c c m dot org who wrote a who wrote a blog post which I'll link below but basically what they what they explain is that these uh, these bags uh, made by Baxter are in something called a Viaflex container and that particular container, if you read the package insert, it says, quote, solutions in contact with the plastic container can leach out certain of its chemical components in very small, of, in very small amounts within the expiration period. And this includes DEHP. You chemists could go ahead and tell me what that is and how it works, but uh, it doesn't sound like it should be within the, the sodium chloride. In addition to that, I found some other data that says that the bag, could, the bag couldn't release formic acid, acetic acid, or hydrochloric acid. So all those things contribute to the pH being 5.0 as noted here, or between 4.5 and 7.0. I will, though, uh, link you back to that other blog post that I mentioned on uh, poemccm.org, because more important than this number of pH of 5.0, which may seem very acidic, there's something more important than something about a Stewart equation and some fancy chemistry stuff that I don't really understand. But basically speaking, more important than the actual pH in the bag is something called the strong ion difference. And basically the strong ion difference is the difference between the cations and the anions in the fluid. In this case, the cations are sodium and the anions being the chloride. And since there's 154 ml equivalents per liter of each one of those, that basically means the strong ion difference is zero. The strong ion difference in our bodies is about 24. So anything less than 24 creates metabolic acidosis. In other words, a zero here will create a metabolic acidosis. Anything greater than 24 um, in great enough volumes will create a metabolic alkalosis. So this creates a metabolic acidosis. And check the link below so you can see how that, how that comes about. Um, so moving on to the constants of fluid, in milliequivalents per liter, just like everything in our lab values, there's a sodium concentration of, let me see if I could get it here, Come on camera, come on camera. All right, there it says 154, right there. So this this fluid is actually 
it has a higher sodium concentration than, than the normal sodium in our body. In our body, the reference ranges are, you know, normal low being 135 and normal high being 145, which I'm sure you'll still be super thirsty with a, with a sodium of 145. Having a sodium concentration of 154 is not normal, and it puts patients at risk for hypernatremia. Okay, if you read the package insert from Baxter that comes with these uh, with these bags that comes inside the box, and you could also download it in PDF format online, you'll see that hypernatremia causes a wider range of adverse effects, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, cramps. Um, thirst of course uh, and also tachycardia things that we see in all of our patients and then we're like why why are they having all these symptoms well take a look at the fluids that you're giving the patient in addition to that it's a huge risk factor to be hypernatremic uh, in patients who are delirious and me being a critical care doc I have a lot of patients who are delirious and they're super super thirsty so that just makes them crazier than they already are having all these tubes and lines all over the place um, there are also central nervous effects, central nervous system, excuse me, effects of uh, being hypernatremic, and that includes headaches, dizziness, restlessness, weakness, muscle twitching, or rigidity. Um, the package insert also says death. I haven't seen death from uh, hypernatremia unless, you know, something is really, really wrong, and it wouldn't be um, induced by uh, IV fluids. There are other, other things that are more important. Uh, going on to the chloride level. One thing that I always ask my med students when I used to work with med students is, you know, what's the chloride level in normal saline? And everybody says, oh, it's 98. Well, if you look here, it's 154. And normal is between 98 and 110, being low normal and high normal. Um, and so, therefore, when we say that this is normal saline, it's, it's really not. And so, the problem with the hyperchloremia is that it causes a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. So, you have a patient, you resuscitate them with this, with this fluid, and you kind of watch your bicarb just trickle down as you provide this fluid. As an example, just take a DKA patient who you admit in the emergency department. They already have a very low bicarb uh, simply from their acidosis. In addition to that, you pound them with 6 liters of this stuff. And then you wonder why um, their bicarb doesn't come up when when you've been doing the QX hour uh, BMPs. And you'll notice that their hyperchloremia has become an issue all of a sudden. And you have a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, which is, you know, causing issues in, in, your, in your labs. And the patient is still uh, kind of tachypnic and... You know, it's just it's just an adverse effect that, that that it's an adverse effect that you don't want. So you might say to yourself, "Okay, Eddie, that's cool. You're saying you're teaching us all this cool stuff, but where's the data?" So, just some data from this particular journal, not this one in particular, not this particular uh, issue. But um, I will link these below. But there is an association with hyperchloremia and mortality in critically ill septic patients. Um, we also have a recent article, and I say recent because it's been within the last year or so, uh, and it is 2017 right now. Uh, for you, those of you who watch this in like a couple of years, thanks for watching. <laughs> but anyway, um, it talks about how hyperchloremia and just an increase of greater than 5 milliequivalents per liter on the patient's labs put patients at risk for acute kidney injury in those who are septic, uh, well, with severe sepsis, or those who have septic shock. So that's something to keep in mind. And then there's also an opinion piece uh, where we're... One of the critical care authors states that saline is not the first choice for crystal resuscitation in fluids published in SCCM. Uh, continuing on with reading the bag itself. Okay, so we talked about all those other goodies, and then you have the osmolarity, and the osmolarity is uh, 308, and then that is the calculated osmolarity. If you, God, I wish I could get this to work, because then you guys will actually believe me. But the calculated osmolarity is 308. So if you look at the normals for our body, it's between 275 and 295. Honestly, I don't have an issue with, uh, with the osmolarity of this fluid. Um, there's also a calculated and a measured osmolarity. And um, if you use the measured osmolarity when it's, when it's in vivo instead of in this bag, um, it's actually closer to the 285 to uh, 280, 290 range. So that's not really an issue. But all in all, what was my objective with this? Well, I want you guys to know what's in it. Get this bag, pick it up, look at it. Every time you walk into a patient's room, be cognizant of the contents of the fluid and be mindful that this is not normal. This is, I mean, even though everybody calls it normal saline, it's not normal at all. Um, I definitely welcome thoughts, opinions, or any sort of academic discussions uh, with regards to this particular talk. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. 
and um, ultimately I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and I hope you learned something. Oh, the rest of the bag is just a bunch of other miscellaneous things that uh, don't really apply to us. But yeah, anytime you give a patient a fluid, whether it be D5 or half normal, whatever, just pick it up and look at what's in it, okay? That's pretty important and it's your responsibility as a clinician to be uh, cognizant of everything that we give our patients. Thank you so much for watching.